Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution called Q4OS, which is designed to be a fast and powerful Linux distribution that is based on Debian. While not specifically designed for lightweight use, it is designed to be run on any number of devices, whether they be newer, more powerful machines or older devices that require a lighter weight operating system. Its goal is to be as fast and efficient as possible while providing a good user experience. And before we get into looking at all of its features, we'll take a quick look at their website and see exactly what they wish to showcase. First off, they talk about how Q4S has a set of unique tools that make it really easy to set up your desktop exactly how you'd like to. We'll take a look at many of these in a moment. It's also mentioned here how it's meant to be incredibly rock solid and stable. This is based on the stable branch of the latest version of Debian, so while packages may not always be the most up to date, the focus here is stability. It's assumed that you can just expect everything to work. Q4OS also comes with many different visual themes as well as a look switcher that allows you to quickly apply these different themes and overall appearances to the system. And there's also the fact that Q4OS comes with a Trinity desktop environment option. We'll take a look at this in a few minutes as this is really an interesting aspect. Trinity desktop environment is a fork of an older version of KDE, specifically KDE 3, and has been continued as its own desktop environment, heading in a different direction than newer versions of KDE Plasma. And they also mention here how this is dual desktop ready. If you'd like, you can easily install and use multiple desktop environments. And there's a couple other features here that they showcase, but instead of going through the whole site, we'll just start taking a look at some of these features. Now, this is the KDE version that we're using here, and this is a pretty stock KDE. There's not a whole lot here that's been modified with the desktop environment itself. So rather than focus on the KDE desktop, we'll start by looking at the specific features of Q4OS. As you can see here, we have the Q4OS welcome screen, and this showcases a few of their custom utilities. First off, we have an option here for the desktop profiler. This is a unique utility that allows you to customize which programs are installed with Q4OS by default. It has a few presets here that allow you to customize your desktop experience based on what you're looking to use Q4OS for. For example, we have the full featured desktop here, which installs everything that you would expect. Default web browsers, office suites, plenty of system utilities that you would use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is ideal for most end users that are looking to use Q4OS as a fully featured operating system. We then have this base Q4OS option, which installs all of the core system utilities, uh, and gives you your desktop environment of choice, but emits a few pieces of software such as an office suite and some additional utilities. The goal with this is to be a lighter weight base that you can then install your specific applications that you wish to use on top of. And then we have the aptly named Ultimately Minimal Install. This, as the name implies, gives you just the core packages of Q4OS with really nothing else and you're able to set up your entire system as you see fit. While this does give a lot of flexibility for you to set up your system exactly as you wish to, it does require a bit of rather advanced setup after the fact, so this really wouldn't be recommended for most users. In most cases, you'll probably want to go with the full featured install, but having this more minimal option is nice if you wish to sort of customize the applications you have installed and you want to start with a lighter base. The other great feature in here is the ability to choose our desktop environments. This allows us to install multiple desktop environments and switch between them whenever we want to do so. That's actually what I've done here. I originally downloaded the Trinity version of this, but then installed KDE as a secondary environment. And this explains that you really shouldn't be doing this unless you truly have a reason to do so and kind of know what you're getting into, as having multiple desktop environments installed can cause some issues. So you do have to tick this box to say you're sure you want to do this, and then you have a list of various different desktop environments that you can install. Now, personally, I would recommend sticking with KDE Plasma, 
as well as Trinity. Those are the two desktop environments officially supported by Q4OS and that they recommend using. You Theoretically, you shouldn't have too many issues with using the two of these in conjunction with one another. While you can install all of these other desktop environments here, do be cautious when doing so, as Q4OS doesn't officially support these, and you may be left having to solve a few issues or install some additional packages on your own to make sure everything's working right. On the topic of desktop environments, we will be taking a look at the Trinity version in a moment and looking at the ways that it differs and some different features that it has. Next up on the welcome screen, we have this Install Applications button. This is an interesting utility that includes a curated selection of packages for commonly used programs that you may wish to install. You can also install different web browsers from here. Google Chrome is installed by default here in the full install, but you could also install Chromium or Firefox from here. There's also other commonly used packages that may or may not already be installed, such as LibreOffice, VLC Media Player, Thunderbird, and Skype, as well as packages for the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, and a few specific custom utilities, such as the Q4OS Look Switcher. This is really a nice place to start to install a lot of common applications that you may wish to use. Uh, as well as some updated or proprietary drivers, as well as some Q4OS specific applications. Of course, if you want to open the full package manager, you can click on the button here. Because we're in KDE, it is using the Discover Software Center. However, if you're using the Trinity version, then it will take you into the Synaptic Package Manager. There's also a button here to install some proprietary media codecs in order to play all sorts of different media file types. This looks eerily like a Windows installation, like a Windows setup wizard here, but you can walk through this pretty quickly. Uh, I've already installed these, so this won't work again. But uh, you can walk through this to install those codecs. I also have a shortcut here to toggle desktop effects. Uh, we have this button to switch to the kickoff menu. This doesn't do anything here in KDE. This is a feature specific to the Trinity version that we'll be looking at in a moment. And we have a button here to enable or disable auto login for your user account. Now I'll briefly run through some of the default applications that come included with the full install of Q4OS. Taking a look in our menu here for games, we have Solitaire. Under Graphics, we have the Gwenview Image Viewer. Uh, Ocular Document Viewer, and our scanning utility, uh, PDF Scanner. Under Internet, this comes with Google Chrome installed by default, but as I pointed out earlier in this Install Applications feature, it's easy to install other web browsers. It also includes Thunderbird for email, as well as a few KDE utilities for KDE Connect, which allows you to connect an Android phone up and receive notifications on your desktop. As for Conqueror being included here, this has to do with the Trinity version of Q4OS, and so we'll talk about that in a couple moments once we switch over and look at Trinity. For multimedia, we have Clementine, the music player, a disc-burning utility, as well as VLC media player. Under Office, we have the full LibreOffice suite, and once again, our document viewer, Ocular. Science and Math just includes a shortcut for LibreOffice Math. Settings gives us some of the shortcuts we expect, such as our firewall configuration, printer settings, and a shortcut to the full KDE system settings. We also have the Look Switcher, which is one of the custom Q4OS utilities. This allows us to pick between a few different themes here that have been set up by default. By default, we're using this Q4OS Debonair theme, but we also have the regular Breeze and Breeze Dark themes for KDE, as well as a Windows 10 style theme here that actually does a surprisingly good job of mimicking the look of Windows 10. KDE's overall appearance just really fits the Windows 10 aesthetic quite well. Uh, so if that's something you're into, um, it's obviously not a one-to-one -one replica here, but the theming fits in rather nicely.
And we also have a sort of Windows XP theme here. Obviously it's just a visual skin, it's not going to really change too much of the behavior in the system, but it gives sort of a Windows XP look to things here. Uh, definitely not completely, as you can see it's still using more modern icons here, but on the surface it's more of a Windows XP look. When we look at the Trinity desktop in a couple moments, we'll actually talk a bit more about uh, sort of the Windows XP aesthetic, as it kind of applies to Trinity much more than it does KDE. For now, we'll uh, use the KDE, or for now, we'll use the Breeze Dark theme, as I'm personally a fan. And continuing through our default applications, we have various system utilities here, including the Discover Software Center, the Dolphin File Manager various other system utilities, including our system monitor, everything that you'd come to expect. And of course, help will open up the KDE help documentation. We'll switch over to the Trinity desktop version in just a moment here, but before we do, I want to compare the resource usage of both versions of Q4OS. So we'll start by rebooting the KDE version here so that we can check the resource usage on a clean boot up. And on a clean restart here, we see that the KDE version is using roughly 570 megabytes of memory. And then we'll switch over to the Trinity desktop and see what its usage is on first boot. Now we've just rebooted into the Trinity desktop environment, and we can see by comparison, this is using about 430 megabytes of RAM on first boot. So, while both systems are reasonably lightweight, if you are looking for something that uses fewer resources, uh, then Trinity is probably the best way to go. That said, this is still a very usable experience. It has all of the same Q4OS features that we just took a look at with the KDE version, but it does so in a lighter weight package. The Trinity desktop environment being forked from an older version of KDE uh, has a few interesting quirks with it. Just by looking at the main menu here, the design language looks very similar to Windows XP, which was particularly popular about 15 years ago. Uh, and throughout the system, you know, just looking at the various uh, settings pages and um, built-in applications, you know, it's got a very Windows XP looking aesthetic here. So it's a bit of an older looking desktop in some regards, but as you can see, it's still using the modern Breeze KDE themes, uh, and it's certainly very functional. Um, and while we have the welcome screen here, that does bring up the fact that we can switch to the kickoff menu, which is the default KDE menu, if we wish to do so. And now we can see here that it's using the kickoff menu from KDE. This modernizes the look a little bit and uh, might add a little bit more functionality than the default menu has. Uh, which definitely does look like something out of Windows XP. But all in all, this is still a very functional experience. As I mentioned earlier, I do want to talk about Conqueror. Conqueror is the default file manager here in the Trinity desktop version of Q4OS. And as a file manager, it works very well. Uh, it has all the core functions that you would expect in a file manager. The interesting thing that comes into play, however, is the fact that back in the day of KDE 3, Conqueror wasn't just the file manager, but it was also the default web browser at the time. And in fact, if you click Conqueror from the panel here, it doesn't open up to the file manager, but actually to a web page. And I just need to point out that this does not appear to have been updated in a very long time. Conqueror is not a modern web browser. For example, if we... <laughs> oh, okay, it doesn't search, I forgot. We have to put a whole URL. For example, if we go to google.com, it can load this okay. Google's a pretty simple website. But as soon as we try something a bit more complicated, such as YouTube, it's just not going to happen. it just cannot do it. So, unless you're loading web pages that are very simple, like just HTML text, maybe the occasional image, uh, Conqueror is not going to render those right. So it's kind of weird that here in Trinity, it is still classified as a web browser and will open web pages, 
uh, when in fact it does not it does not do that very well. So Google Chrome is of course installed by default. If you install the full desktop version of Q4OS, obviously that's what you're going to want to stick to as your modern web browser here. Conqueror just won't cut it. As for Conqueror, you're going to want to stick to what its main purpose is meant for these days, which is just being a file manager, which it does very well. Now, if we take a look at the themes here in Trinity, which is under Control Center, Appearance and Themes, and we'll open up the Look Switcher. Here we have our default Q4OS theme, and then we have a couple others that look remarkably similar to Windows XP. Uh, personally, I'm a fan of this one here. It's going to ask us to log out to apply it. And now that we're logged back in here, as you can see, this really does have a sort of Windows XP looking aesthetic, uh, but kind of modernized here with the translucent panel and all that. And in fact, I believe we can configure this to be on the bottom. There we go. And uh, this is actually kind of a nice, you know, modern looking uh, implementation of something that's very similar to Windows XP, if that's the aesthetic or appearance that you'd prefer to use. Uh, while we still got the welcome screen here, this br does bring up one of my last points I want to mention, which is that in the Trinity version of Q4OS, Synaptic Package Manager is the default. So when we were in KDE, it was using the Discover Software Center, but here in Trinity, it uses Synaptic, which is certainly very capable. You know, this, this works very well. It doesn't look quite as nice as the Discover Software Center in KDE or some other software centers, but it is pretty lightweight, so staying in line with the fact that Trinity is typically meant to use fewer resources, uh, this works well enough. And there's still the fact that you have the Install Applications program here that gives you a lot of your commonly used Linux apps to install. All in all, Q4OS is quite a nice package. It's a very stable Debian-based Linux distribution that gives you a lot of choice in regards to which desktop environment you wish to use. If you're looking for something stable and rock solid, then I'd recommend giving this a try, either the KDE or Trinity versions, or if you really want to mess around with installing an additional desktop environment, then you could certainly give that a try. Even if you're not too sure about Q4OS, but you really like the prospect of the Trinity desktop environment, or you were a fan of KDE back in the day, then this is a great distribution to try the desktop with, because it's officially supported out of the box. You can download an image of Q4OS with the Trinity desktop by default, uh, and it's probably the best experience that you'll have with the Trinity desktop if that's what you're interested in. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Q4OS or the Trinity desktop environment in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this review, then a like on the video is greatly appreciated. And if you're new here, then you can always stay up to date with the latest content and uploads by subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell. I also post content updates over on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.